Well, today we're on board Crusader 3 with David Clayfield, skipper. Um, charters the uh, Why Not Fishing Charters. We're out here for three days out of Sejuna Wide. Our anchorage is going to be at the uh, St Francis Island Group. Uh, and it looks like a beautiful, beautiful anchorage, Dave. It's superb. A very, very uh, big bay. Can accommodate a lot of vessels here. Open to the north, so anything that's from the southeast round to the, yep. the west is well, well, uh, well sheltered. Cannon Reef's a few miles south of St Francis Island and offers great fishing on you know, the iconic game fish, groper, Samson fish, kingfish, hopefully some tuna as well. So this is Maslin here, and it's got a, a unique little bay there which goes in quite deeply and offers fantastic protection from anything really from the southwest right round to the northeast. So as long as there's not too much southwest swell coming this way, it's a wonderful anchorage there. It's got some high cliffs all around it, you can tuck right in very close and it just glasses out. Okay, well let's get out to Cannon Reef and uh, see if we can go from there. Great, we can do that. As seems to be the case on many deep water offshore reefs, the first drop will often produce some of the largest fish of the trip. Leah Hill found out just what happens when you get down there first. This is obviously a big king or a big Samson fish and just the action we were looking for. And from a big king to one of the smallest fish of the trip. I was still interested though to see what these reefs held. Sejuna is set well away from the shelf and as a consequence most of these reefs are only in 20 to 50 metres of water. But my expectations were high. Then the Samson fish turned up and again proved that they are the main big predator on these prolific southern reefs. Oh, what a bumper. Oh, that's a big silver trevally, isn't it, eh? Well. That's about as big a silver trevally as I've seen. Probably all of four kilos there, maybe, maybe a little bit more even, maybe five kilos. It's taken one of these banana boat jigs. A little grunt, isn't he? Yeah, what a thumper. Jigs with skirts like the Lacanus or the banana boat here or the Octa jig. They certainly uh, pick up a lot more fish than yeah, just they kingfish. Well They're today, picking, they? um, yeah. Groper. Groper. Trevally. Absolutely. Yellow kingies, yeah. Mixed bag. Hey, well, that's a good silver trevally on the jig. It's good trevally, Leah. Oh. How's that? Oh, we only just got him lip hooked, <laughs> just on the banana boat. Although these monster silver trevally were a surprise, thinking about it, it made common sense. Cannon Reef is only about 40 metres deep, so it obviously attracts both inshore and offshore species. And let me tell you, these trevally pull every bit as hard as a king. Some of the lures used on these reefs include 250 to 400 gram knife jigs. Now this is a standard approach for samsa fish, kingfish and amberjack all around the world. However, we were finding the slower sinking skirted jigs, like the octa jig here, were also being hit hard by many of the reef inhabitants. Multiple hookups were common, and it wasn't long before the Samsons moved in again.
biggest sun you've ever seen. Have a look at that. That is unbelievable. Oh, that would be the biggest salmon I've seen in a long while. You thought it was a kingfish, Deb. <laughs> that is enormous. That's got to be maybe six kilos. There you go, have a look at that. That is unbelievable. Silver knife jig. Down the bottom? Uh, halfway up. Halfway up. Out on Cannon Road. 15 pound. What a, what a horse. <laughs> so Cannon Reef in South Australia's remote west gave us just a small sample of what it can produce. There are safe anchorages close by and the prevailing 15 to 20 knots southeasterlies in February don't make it impossible to get there.